Oh yeah, let's paint a little. Let's get a little of the yellow ochre. Happy grass. y'all i'm alan hayne lawn care now thanks for coming back for yet another week so this is one of those videos that's for carbon x customers if you're not a carbon x customer you're not interested in carbon x and you don't like all the pitches about carbon x then i was truthful in what the title was of this video so go ahead and click off now you don't have to watch it you can check out other videos here we got plenty of tips for you also check out my podcast lawns across america but if you are a customer then you're definitely looking for information about carbon x if you look at the bags we sent you they are definitely definitely looking experimental. And I mean, this is not an experimental fertilizer, but as far as it comes to DIYers, it's definitely something new. Now the pros have had a hold of it for a while and they've been testing it out and perfecting it. And that's why it's perfect for us now. But that also doesn't mean that it's flawless or that it's anything like anything else that you've already used. This is a fertilizer that's made for professionals. And so therefore I need to do a little bit more content around it so I can make sure that I explain things in a way that DIYers can understand and that I can help you calibrate your equipment because most of us, including me definitely do not have professional type equipment the other thing that we don't have is quite the experience that the professionals have so with that I'm gonna try to answer some questions today by going through and applying carbon X on my own for the very first time and letting you know what I find and then the end come up to some good spreader settings as well as give you some best practices based on what I'm learning here in real time in addition to that I've also gotten some feedback from some of our early beta testers that's folks that ended up getting their carbon X even before I did from our shipments but they just lived closer to the warehouse got theirs first and actually got their applications down, I've gotten some feedback from them that I'll be incorporating in here as well. At the end of the day, the idea is to help support you in the purchase that you made of our brand new product. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and do this entire part of my lawn. So there's been no nitrogen or macro type fertilizer applied in this part of my lawn at all since the last app of Carbon X, which was in January. And that was actually just the test batch of Carbon X. And the stuff that we have now is, is quite a bit different. So it's been a while since this has had any fert. So we will definitely see a difference. Now I did put some RGS here and some Humic 12, but those don't have any fertilizer value in them. I just want you to know. So let's just go ahead and take a quick look at our domination line here. And you can see it's faded. Again, we haven't had any fur in a while so we definitely need to get this cleaned up now one other thing I did and we've had rain so I haven't been able to see this test yet though is I sprayed hydrotane and I stopped right at that red bush over there that sister bush I sprayed hydrotane from here over and no hydrotain over there. And the idea there is to run a test. We haven't dried out at all, so the grass hasn't really suffered, so the hydrotain hasn't had to you know, do its thing yet. But I just wanna let you guys know that. But all of this is still gonna get Carbon X evenly across all the way around. So to give you perspective, that's the area we were just in over there. That's Floritam St. Augustine that's heavily invaded by Bermuda grass. So that's the first spot over there. Now this spot here, this is what I call the main stage here. This is also St. Augustine grass, but this is Palmetto St. Augustine. And you can see it's got a couple dark spots in there. The last time it had fur was Malorganite about six weeks ago. It was a, just an easy 10 pounds per thousand, half pound. So it's definitely in need of something else. I'm not sure what these dark spots are in here. I didn't spill anything or anything like that, but could be where I spot sprayed weeds. Wherever I spot spray weeds, it gets a little bit darker. That's a pretty normal thing to happen. So I'm pretty sure that's what that is. But either way, you can tell this definitely needs some fur. But what I'm gonna do to seal the deal for you guys is I'm actually not going to treat the entire thing. You'll see what I'm going to do, but it will definitely be an ultimate test. And I will live with that ultimate test for as long as I possibly can this season. So stay tuned to the end of the video to show you that test so you can follow the results and make sure you subscribe. Now, before I can do any kind of spreading or calibration or any of the fun stuff, a lot of people will ask me, should I mow the lawn before I fertilize? And the answer is no, it's not required, but if you can, it's only a good idea because you want this stuff to get down into the soil. And so if you can cut the lawn first and get some of the top growth out, that should just logically speaking, help your granules, help your prills settle into the soil. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut first just to get stuff out of the way. So when I do apply and I water it in, it gets in a lot quicker and a lot faster. And that's one of the things you're gonna find with Carbon X here is because it's got some synthetic fertilizer in it, you're gonna get a really fast green up. Okay guys, so the first thing we're gonna do is check out the prill sizes and understand how that works when calibrating a spreader. This will be good for you no matter what fertilizer you're using. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put down some applications, three pounds per thousand on one area. And then I'm gonna put down actually six pounds per thousand over on the Zoysia to show you that no, it's not gonna burn anything, but I don't want you to over apply either. 
And then I'm gonna do a big old fat stripe right up the middle of the main stage to show you what it looks like with Carbon X and without. So just to review quickly, Carbon X has an analysis of 2404, 24% nitrogen, 4% potash or potassium, and it's phosphorus free. I always recommend 3 quarter pounds of nitrogen per 1,000 square feet when using Carbon X, which means you're going to need to put down 3 pounds of actual product against each 1,000 square foot of lawn space to get that. That's because 3 times 0.24 is 0.72, and 0.72, just making my math easy, is really close to 3 quarter pounds of nitrogen per 1,000 square feet. If you don't understand everything I'm saying here, that's okay. You will figure it out. Just hang out, stay in the community, subscribe to my email newsletter below, watch my podcast, and it's going to click for you, and then you'll be able to use these more advanced strategies to turn your lawn super double dark, baby. All right, I'm out here in the blazing sun, but this is good, good practice here. So let's talk about prill size, because originally I told you guys to set your setting on around five with the uh, little Scott spreader there. But that's because, you know, I didn't have any actual product in my hand. I had to just guess, and I guessed that it would flow at three pounds per thousand, similar to a Scott's product. So the way that you figure this out, though, because we are going to have to adjust it, is you get a Scott's product. And I've already done that here for you. This is a Scott's Turf Builder. Now, just look at the size of these prills. Now what I did is, and you don't have to do all of this work, I'm doing this for you, but I want you to understand the why behind. When I come up with these spreader settings for you, I want you to understand why I did that. So I got the Scott's product, and the Scott's setting for three pounds per thousand is between four and five, and that's on that Scott's spreader right there. So how did I get that? Came over here to the Scott's product, and what you're gonna see is Scott's Broadcast Rotary Spreader setting four. It gives you that, right? That's how Scott's keeps you stuck in their ecosystem too, by the way, is they only give you a spreader setting for their spreader. Pretty smart, actually. And then what we're gonna see is this particular product, though, I need to make sure what's the rate. So I know the spreader setting is four, but what will that put out? And according to this, this package applies 2.81 pound of product per 1,000, so almost three. As I've illustrated to you before, these spreaders are not super high quality. In fact, your kid's bubble mower is probably made a little bit better. So they're not all gonna work the same. But we know then, if we're in the neighborhood of setting four or five, we will put this product down with this pearl size at three pounds per thousand. The other thing we can do then is look at some of the experiences we have. And I also know from using that spreader and testing it, I'll, I'll link in the description below to the video where I calibrated that spreader. I also know that Milo goes down at about the same setting at three pounds per thousand. So if I wanted to put three pounds per thousand down on Milo, I know that that same setting of four or five on the Scott spreader is gonna be real close. And you can see the pearl sizes are fairly close. Now, another product that I've used and showed you guys is our Yard Mastery Prodiamine Pre-Emergent. And you can see that here. And these pearls are slightly larger, but not too bad. And that's because Sunnyland knows that their stuff sits next to Scott's a lot on shelves, or in our case, we send it to you. But they do try to formulate their pearl size to be similar because most people have these Scott spreaders. So you can see the pearls are a little larger on the sunny land, but not much. And I noticed that when I talked to you guys about doing this, we said maybe we go to a 5.6 type setting for this, and you can see the pearls are just slightly larger. That would make sense. Now there's another one that a lot of you guys have used. This is the Sunnyland Melorganite Clone. Now this won't be for a lot of you in the country, but my friends in Florida, Texas, Georgia, you've seen this, and we know that the Sunnyland Clone has giant fat prills. Just look at those big old beefy things. And so because of that, we've had to dial our setting up on these on a Scott spreader to eight or nine. And what's interestingly enough is that these big chunks in the Carbon X are similar in size to the big chunks in the Sunnyland. And so that tells me then that probably with that Scott spreader, I'm gonna be somewhere around a spreader setting of eight. And one point of clarity here real quick, I know that the dark charcoal gray chunks in the Carbon X look very similar to the dark black chunks in the Milo or in the Sunnyland, but they are not the same thing. The Milo and the Sunnyland are biosolids, and the chunks in the Carbon X are biochar. Those are very different materials, very different elements, both good for the soil. Now that spreader setting of eight then with the Carbon X should give me my three pounds per thousand rate. The other thing is, is I get by with a little help from my friends and I've had a couple guys from our group who have already tested this and they have indeed confirmed, yes, Alan, somewhere around eight with the Scott spreaders where you wanna be for three pounds per thousand with Carbon X. So let's test it out. So based on my previous experience with different pearl sizes logic and also getting a little help from my friends, I'm going with a spreader setting of eight. I've got a 1,000 square foot pie-shaped area over here on the side, that's section one, and that'll be my first test. 
Now I'm not just gonna put in three pounds because I wanna make sure the spreader flows evenly from start to finish. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in much more than that and then I'll just weigh out what's left over at the end to know if I put down the right amount. So I don't know if you can see that, but we're right at just six, just over six pounds, 6.17 pounds. So we should have then three pounds left when we get back. We're very close. Go ahead, set this to eight. Take a look. There you go, I always talk about the visuals. You only get to put half of that down across that area right there, only half. It, that's all you get and I didn't do trim passes or anything because a trim pass with this particular spreader here is fairly useless so I'm just throwing as close to the edges as I can but that was it you saw those quick easy passes one up one back over and down done I don't know how much closer than that it could be. 2.99, and what did, I, what did we start with? 6.17, so we went one, we went 0.18 pounds too heavy, which is nothing. So I'm gonna tell you that a spreader setting of eight, and again, these are all a little bit different, but definitely you can go to the bank with a seven and a half or an eight for the Carbon X, and that'll get you three pounds per thousand. I'm gonna go ahead and test it out in one more section of the lawn that's 2,000 square feet just to double check. Okay, so let's do one more area and we're gonna do this front section here that I showed you and this section is 2,000 square feet. So I'm gonna need six pounds to go down, but again, I'm gonna go over because I wanna make sure that I have good flow all the way to the end. So in that case, I'm gonna put probably eight or 10 pounds in the hopper. And again, we'll just weigh at the end, but let's see how close we get. Okay, so that's coming in at 11.35, so 11 and a third pounds. we go we started at 11.35 we had 5.25 left over it's actually a 27 but we're making my math easy so that's 016 we put down 6.1 pounds i would say that's pretty close especially considering the actual measurement on that area is 2080 so on my spreader there scott seven and a half to eight that is right in the neighborhood of three pounds per thousand with carbon x mark it down and please test this on your own if you like it's a really good exercise to go through and it will really help you understand a lot more about square footage and what you're doing in application rates okay let's do one more and let's do uh the 2600 a plus that everybody has and so that is a we're going to do this area here section four this is my zoysia grass and it's 2500 square feet so i'm going to need seven let's see six so I'm gonna need seven and a half pounds, right? Because I have 2,500, my app rate is three pounds per thousand. So that means I need seven and a half pounds of product to go across this area, this pie-shaped area right here. That is 2,500 square feet. Or, you know, I'm making my math easy. It's 2,480. So I think it's pretty obvious to anybody that looks, the settings on this spreader, you know, they work differently than here on the Scots. You know, obviously the drop holes are different too. You have a little bit better, what I think is a better setup here with three drop holes. This also has the ability to make a real trim pass, but we're not gonna do that today. I'm just gonna throw out to the edges and then I'll use a blower to clean it up. But for sure, the one thing I do know because I've been using this spreader for a long time is that typically 
three pounds per thousand. And remember, we talked about our prill sizes over there in our little Bob Ross experiment. Typically, three pounds per thousand with Milo or Scott's for me is going to be between right between setting, you know, 11, 12, right in there somewhere. So I can just tell you that when I use the Sunnyland, I got to open this puppy up a little bit more and uh, I got to be somewhere right around the 20 mark. So that's what I'm going to do here and test it out and just tell you guys we'll, we'll test it but that's my logical guess is that based on what i did here and how much i had to adjust here and then from my previous experience with that sunnyland product which is larger i'm gonna have to bust this up to a 20 so let's see how that does yeah that looks like much better so that's what we're gonna go with let's go with a 20 and let's test it out We're going deep to overcomplicate the simple math on this one. I've got 2,500 square feet. That means at a three pounds per 1,000 rate, I need 7.5 pounds. I'm starting here with 11.72. So when I get done spreading, I should have 4.27 pounds of product left over. do because we have the opportunity is I'm gonna put another full app down here so I put in a little more than three pounds per thousand now I'm gonna do it again at three pounds per thousand we're gonna make it six pounds per thousand because one of the by the way that's a dry spot right there something going on with the roots anyway people will say can you burn your lawn with this stuff well I don't know let's put down a double app and see do not do this at home this is to show you that you can't burn your lawn with this stuff because some of you guys are scared of it don't be scared do not do this this is experimental only six pounds per thousand and i'm doing it for research so i can make sure that i give you guys the right setter spreader setting for a 2600 a plus over there had talked about some of the residue getting in there and yeah definitely some of that so again you're working with biochar here and uh, that believe it or not is good in your soil feel it feel this black stuff when you get it when you get it feel it feel that in your soil that's nice so yeah so what you're gonna have to wash your spreader a little bit all right it's getting late in the day and the audio isn't gonna be the best on this but here's what I'm gonna do I am gonna prove something to you I'm going to show you something, I guess. I'm going to take my spreader. I'm going to take this spreader here that I've just calibrated to put down at three pounds per thousand. And I'm going to take one pass diagonal straight up through there. Hook them horns right up through there. And that's what I'm going to do. And then we're going to see, you're going to see, I'm going to have this dark green stripe, but that'll prove to you. You can see how green this is right now. It's had Milo a few weeks ago. It's due for its next app, whatever, but that'll show you exactly what it can do to a very healthy lawn, a health, a green, a lawn that's already green and already growing very well. We're going to do one pass right down the middle at three pounds per thousand. Here we go. 